I would, I would put my answer in this way. As Rapporteur um, for the Rights of Women and what we have learned in the Rapporteurship of it, it is very, very grave. It is devastating to, to women's exercise of the fundamental right that they have to enter politics, to be, to work in politics, not even as candidates, but just as, as supporters helping a candidate. All of them suffer violence. All of them suffer hate speech. All of them suffer threats. All of them suffer injuries to their bodies and some of them suffer death. Now that is devastating. And the funny thing is, is that the person who is attacked or killed is not the only one affected. Because the, the reason behind such acts of violence against women in politics is to dissuade other women from going into politics. This is an example of the fundamental and lowest form of discrimination against women. Because they do not, those people do not want women in positions of power. It is, and it does cause women to pull away from politics. And others have become even more determined to go into politics. So these acts of gratuitous violence are not working. In fact, they're having the opposite effect because more women are coming into politics, but the other side remains. More women are being attacked. Well, the Commission has issued many, many recommendations. The first and most important is that each state should have laws which protect the rights of women to go into politics and, and be work in for politics, for their candidates, for them to be able to vote, for them to go safely to polling stations and put in their vote, or even work in polling stations, and to assist their candidates to win. Um, they have to be protected as well, not just the candidates. And the, the Commission also says that if anyone attacks um, any woman in, polit in politics or around politics by words, by deeds, and, or kills them, the state agencies must investigate the matter with due diligence and find the perpetrators, charge them, try them, and if convicted, punish them. And they may even have to give the victims of such um, 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 violations of rights reparations in the circumstances. And then that would they have to do, the states must train people. And that means not only people, people in government, but also the general public, that women have a fundamental right to be in politics and to compete for places in, in the power structure and that they are not to be violated in any way or form. These are just a few of, of, of these. That there are quite a few as well that states can go into, but it's a long list. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that the region has um, many challenges and we have, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen uh, different acts of violence mm -hmm. uh, in the recent days in, in the media. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is, um, there's hope for us in, in that sense? Do you think that we're working towards um, finally beginning to put an end to this? Um, well, it's the, the state's duty to really take steps to eradicate this. But I think the hope lies with you young people. I think the young are much more informed than we were in my era and they are active, active participants by voicing what they expect of people in positions of power. And that is an effective tool to ensure that the state apparatus works in favor of protecting the rights of women. And the young women coming around today are not going to be patient 
as we were in my young days. Right? So I think there's hope, but it's going to be, take hard work and commitment and direction. Well, the impact on them is even worse than it is on other women, and that is bad enough. Because, for instance, in all the Americas, um, um, Afro-descendant women only hold 0.3% of uh, um, political uh, membership in, in Congresses and Parliaments. And yet, they make up 15 to 20 percent of the population. So you see that it's so low that it's almost invisible, their presence. So they are badly affected and, and really out of, out of the show. In relation to uh, um, indigenous women, the last um, figure I got a couple of years ago was that it was even lower than that. And um, so things are very bad for them. They are, suffer the worst violence. They suffer the worst hate speech and, and so on because the abuses laid on them, uh, you have the ethnic uh, um, abuses as well used against them. Um, it's very bad. And um, anyway, there was a rec the recent, this, a few months ago, the, this daytime, daytime, bright sunlight in Rio de Janeiro, slaughter of uh, Mariel Franco. And until now, nobody has been found who was a perpetrator. Busy street, shot, and then her driver was killed in the process. Her partner has suffered all sorts of threats and things. And she was a well-known counselor who was doing marvelous work. Um, um, for the Afro-descendants groups. And, the, the, um, and a couple of years before that, Bertha Cáceres was, was also killed. There's so many murders of women who were involving themselves in politics that you, I don't want to upset your audience and all that, but there are so many, they would be upset to hear about it. And we have to do something about it and states are obligated to do something about it.